Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in here to Columbus, Ohio at the United Sports Center for today's TBL basketball matchup between the number one team in the Midwest, the Kokomo Bobcats at 11 and two versus the Columbus Condors who are fourth in the Midwest at six and five. I am Seth Donahoe and alongside me is Will Ward. Will, beautiful past couple days we've had here in Columbus, Ohio and another good day to have some basketball. Indeed it is. Looking forward to a, a very entertaining game between these two. Definitely would have Kokomo coming in here being the number one seed inside of the Midwest Conference. And Columbus playing you know, usually very well at home. It should be a very entertaining game. Yes, and as I said, K Kokomo Bobcats uh, are number one in the Midwest standings with a record of 11-2. and two, um, And they are, are going against this uh, Columbus Condors team who's won three in a row. And as you said, usually here at home, they are pretty dominant. You don't get to 11 and 2 by just, you know, skating along. So I, I, I assume that it's going to be very, you know, challenging at times for the Condors. But if they stay focused, I know they have key, key players that have come back to return to help them out. So, like I said, it should be a very entertaining game. Yes, and one of those key players returning is number seven, Richie Gordon, who has missed a few games but ended up playing their last game on uh, Friday, I believe, and, and their win. And uh, alongside Richie Gordon out there starting for the Columbus Condors is number two, Cody Ballard, number 23, Brett McKnight, number five, Boo Osborne, and number eight, Andy Bosley. And for the Kokomo Bobcats, we have number 30, Armin Bridgeforth, number 32, A.J. Patty, number 31, Tremont Moore, number 24, uh, Martrellian Gibson, and number 20, Derek Hawthorne. And the first hit got underway, but no one won it cleanly, so we will go ahead and reset here. And the game is now underway with the Condors winning the tip. Brett McKnight passes it down to Richie Gordon, who gives a beautiful touch pass to Cody Ballard. It's a great backdoor pass by Ballard. And a quick full court press right there by Ballard and uh, uh, Osborne not giving any space to Bridgeforth as they cause the turnover and the Condors will get it back here. Looks like Columbus is coming in. That's offense now transitioning to defense. That's def definitely how they wanted to start. Cody Ballard looking to set it up, but that ball intercepted by Derek Hawthorne saves it from going out of bounds. Hawthorne brings the ball up for the Bobcats. A.J. Patty thought about the three, ends up taking it, driving, gets the floater to fall. A.J. Patty. Looking for Patty to maybe take a three here. I'm not for sure how often he's going to shoot that three, but he definitely seemed like he might be able to pull that one. He didn't seem like he hesitated at all. Maybe he sh could shoot it, but he drove pretty well. well. Still early in the game. We'll see what happens. Richie Gordon gets the pass from Cody Ballard as the Bobcats were sleeping. And the foul is going to be committed, uh, I believe, by that's A.J. Patty. So that'll be his first foul of the game. Indeed, it was on Patty. And uh, Richie Gordon going to the line, trying to get his first points of the game. First one is up and good. I think the addition of Richie Gordon back inside of the lineup is huge for the Condors. He gets the second one to fall. And, and you are right. Uh, you know, Brett McKnight has usually been the big man, um, but uh, a little bit shorter than uh, Richie Gordon as Armin Bridgeforth is able to get his first bucket of the game. Brett McKnight has been playing that big man role, but McKnight can use his size to his advantage. Is able to get baskets in the, uh, in the paint. As Bobcats come the other way. Derek Hawthorne trying to find a lane, tightly guarded by Bosley. I think Bosley would... is going to have a, you know, a time guarding Mr. Hawthorne there. He's watching him in pregame. Hawthorne has some, some great athleticism to him, so I expect something big out of him at any moment if Bosley can't continue to contain him. Boo Osborne misses his three attempt, but A.J. Patty, I believe, will pick up his second foul as he shoved Richie Gordon in the back. And the ball will stay down here with Columbus. As we have uh, Zachary Douglas checking in for Patty. Two early fouls for A.J. Patty, one of uh, the leading scorers. Shot's good by Richie. 
averaging 14.4 points a game, A.J. Patty is, so that may hurt them. Hawthorne throws it over to Bridgeforth. Gives it up to Moore, over, back to Hawthorne. Hawthorne slipped as he fell. Osborne the other way, Bosley not able to get the reverse layup to fall. Looks like Hawthorne, I don't know if he wanted a foul. Not for sure if he wants a foul, but I'm pretty sure he wants somebody to come and mop that spot up. Yeah, the, just a, a kind of awkward as he went up for that shot. Still down here looking at the area as coach for Columbus comes out here to wipe it up. Bosley goes to the line for two and connects on his first one. Second one just rolls out. Sound like he had a couple of hecklers there in the crowd that may have made that shot fall out. And we have a uh, few about 15 or 20 people here at the United Sports Center and great handles there by Armin Bridgeforth, but even better hands by Cody Ballard able to knock that one out and not give him an easy layup. And you see he's letting them know about it right now. It's nothing going to be easy here in Columbus. I don't know how it is in Kokomo, but welcome to Columbus. I think that's what he was telling them. Ball swung around on the outside. Three seconds on the shot clock. That three is up and no good by Hawthorne. Brett McKnight for the three-point shot was no good there. Hawthorne, another leading scorer for the Kokomo Bobcats, averaging 19.7 as Moore is able to get that reverse layup to fall. The transition there was pretty quick, and if Columbus can't get back, they're going to have their hands full. Ball down low into Ballard. Ballard going to use try and use his strength against Hawthorne, and Ballard is able to get that mid-range jumper to fall. Clear Mitch match there. He just bodied him down, took him down in the paint, and there you have it. Nice little hook shot there by Ballard. You want to talk about a guy that is confident in his game. Cody Ballard is one of those guys. As Hawthorne is able to drive, get by Richie, and gets past the outstretched hand of Richie Gordon as he's able to convert for his first two points of the game. I said it before, and I think I'm going to continue to say it. Watch out for Hawthorne, man. He's going to light it up today. Richie Gordon just short on the long-range jumper. Bridgeforth trying to find something. Boo Davis all over him, and it looks like Boo Davis will pick up his first foul. I'm sorry, Boo Osborne. What did I say? Did I say Boo Davis? You said Davis. A.J. <laughs> Davis. We're going to keep him in our prayers and continue to continue think, think about A.J. Davis. We got Todd Brown checked into the game for the Condors. Giving Andy Bosley his first break of the game. Hawthorne inbounds the ball to Bridgeforth. Columbus Condors with a 9-8 lead right now. Just over eight minutes to go here in the first quarter. As Bridgeforth finds Tremont Moore for his easy layup. Looks like the tempo is starting to pick up here. Nice bit of chatter that's going around. Richie Gordon, nice drive along the baseline. That was a fabulous drive by Gordon. Tremont Moore dishes over to Derek Hawthorne. Derek, Boo Osborne wanted a little bit of a push off and he's pleading his case right now to the ref, but nonetheless, Derek Hawthorne's able to get the long jumper to fall. Hey, that was just stop, pop, and drop there by Hawthorne. He put the brakes on right at the right time and send Osborne for a little bit of a, uh, you saying it's a shove, I think, you've, I think you just hit the brakes right at the right time. Cody Ballard was uh, trying to post up Martrillian Gibson, but we're gonna have a defense of three seconds as Todd Brown will shoot the technical free throw here. It's up and nothing but net. Got Kellen Thomas checking into the game for Brett McKnight. Look like we're going with a little bit of, uh, I'll say a little bit of quickness after you the Condors. A little smaller size, but body to body here with Ballard. Once again, that looks like that seems to be his move there. As Ballard likes to assert his 
dominance on the inside, even though he is a guard as Moore is not able to get that one to fall. Ballard likes to get his points on the insides, which ends up opening up the three-point shot for him, which uh, he is a good three-point shooter. And talking about three-point shooters is Todd Brown knocks one down. Hey, knocked down penetration by Mr. Ballard. Helped out Brown there for that three. Big three there for Columbus. Moore kicks it over to Douglas. His three's up. That one's no good. Small guard Hawthorne tried coming in for the offensive rebound, but Todd Brown was able to secure it. Brown going to pull up for another three. That one just strong. Richie Gordon with a nice tip out. Oh, and the active hands by Bridgeforth is able to steal that one. Allie, you come. Oh, phenomenal. And no, oh, that was. That was scary as Martrillian Gibson is still down on the still floor. Down. That's called a timeout for him, for him, sure. Coach is saying, let's keep going. Man down, next man up. And they, I think the ball had to get to a, a certain position before they could call timeout as Martrillian Gibson is still down here on the baseline. And Man, he went up for that one. It, yes, did, did. It, it didn't look like there was a whole lot of contact there by Boo Osborne, maybe just as he was going down, couldn't quite get his feet underneath of him and landed hard. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't see any ill will there in that play. I mean, it was a bang bang type play. He went up very high and I mean, it was a electrifying play that he was trying to take, perform, but let's hope that he, you know, he gets up. A player like that, you don't really want to lose this early in the game. No, absolutely not. Uh, we are just, under uh, halfway through here, the first quarter, as the Columbus Condors have a 19 to 12 lead with 6:20 left. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and use this as a as a media timeout. Will, what are you what are you seeing right now from Columbus that's being able to uh, help contain this number one seed Kokomo team? Well, right now I think that they're getting up and down the court and containing them on the offensive or the excuse me the defensive end. And they're getting back on offense, and, and they're putting up enough. You know, Ballard's getting down inside of the paint, and he's helping out. And by him being in the paint, he's kicking it out right now. You see the Browns getting active. So if they can continue to, to stop them on offense, stop Pokemon on offense, limit them in their offensive production, and continue to make sure that they can move the ball around and spread the ball around evenly, they should be able to continue to keep this lead. Seven point lead early in the first quarter, but and I would expect for him to continue to try to work hard. And uh, for for Kokomo, you know, they're, they're getting some good looks, but not just, not really getting anything to fall right now as we hear the, the claps from everyone here around here at the United Sports Complex as Gibson is uh, uh, limping to the sideline, getting help from coach and, and teammates. And, you know, as, you, ne you, you never like to see an injury like this, uh, and we, uh, you know, we certainly hope that he's okay. Hopefully, it isn't anything too serious. No. Hopefully, it just uh, scared him more than actually injured him. Yeah, he seems to be favoring that ankle or that one, that leg a little bit of gingerly there. He couldn't really walk off on his own, so I kind of had, you know, Mr. Gibson highlighted there at the beginning of this game to force some high action type electrifying plays. So let's let's continue to hope everything's okay with him and we don't have any more injuries here in this game. And so we have, uh, as I had said, 6.20 left here in this for first quarter and uh, Condors have a lead over the Bobcats 19 to 12. As uh, Ermias Nega is, has checked in for the Kokomo Bobcats and for Gibson. We'll go ahead and get things start back started underway here. Bridgeforth finds Hawthorne. Looks like uh, the Condors are in a zone here. Either that or they're just in very good position. Four seconds on the shot clock and Bridgeforth had to throw it up, but that is going to be a shot clock violation as nothing hit the rim. Nega tried to uh, tried to get it up in time, but good defense there by the Condors. Great defense by the Condors out of a timeout, injury timeout. Exactly what you want to see if you're the coach of the Condors here. So Ballard inbounds the ball to Osborne. He'll bring the ball up for the Condors and set things up. 
Thomas tried getting it down low to Richie Gordon. That one was knocked out. It's going to stay there with the Condors. See any mismatches right now? Look for a quick shot by the Ballard here. There it is, three-point shot. As, as we had said, Cody Ballard gets his first couple baskets on the inside, and that opens up his three-point game. Nega, he'll take the three, and he'll get that one. Say it right back at you. Whatever you can do, I can do better, huh? Nega's first points of the game for the Bobcats. 22-15 lead here for the Condors. Osborne with the ball, finds a cutting Richie Gordon. And Richie Gordon able to get a nice wide open layup. Great vision there by Osborne to see the leaking Gordon there. I think the Condors are, are happy to have Richie Gordon back uh, in the lineup for them. He had missed a few games, uh, ended up coming back after missing a few games, came back on Friday and helped the Condors get their victory, their third victory in a row. For sure. Not only does Gordon's presence back inside the lineup give you a little bit of action, but just his presence and his energy on the court, you know, it gives the Condors a little bit more, you know, a little bit more umph, and it takes a little bit more off of Brett McKnight as you see him sit on the bench right now. So Hawthorne will go to the line after getting fouled by Gordon as he gets his first one to fall. We've got Kenny Council checking into the game for Osborne to give him a breather. And Hawthorne gets both free throws to fall. Cutting the deficit to seven. Five minutes left here on the first. Good screen there by Richie Gordon to get Kellen Thomas open. Ballard with the ball down low. Bridgeforth is going to foul him, push him. And good idea, good smart play by Ballard to be able to, you know, I don't want to say assume, but know that when he made contact that Bridgeforth was going to try and resist him. And because of that, Ballard will go to the line for two. I like that fadeaway that he just tried to perform. May or may not have sold it a little bit. Yeah, but a, little, a little bit of acting is, is always, you know, it's always well. Never hurts the cause. It's a good sign though. See over there, we got Gibson up off of the bench, stretching it out. So all things seem to be well, stretching out, getting it loose. May but see him back here in the action here soon. As I said, hopefully it just scared him more than anything. Nega couldn't get that one to fall. Ballard quickly comes the other way, finds Todd Brown on the wing. Todd Brown will spot up for three. That one's just short. Rebound there by Douglas. I like what I'm seeing out of Columbus right now. They're getting the ball to the open guy and trying to get those high percentage shots to knock down. So if they can, you know, continue to get those shots and those type of moves, you know, this this lead right now is nine. Continue to grow right now. And uh, their Condors are doing a good job, not standing around, constantly moving, finding the open guy, as you had said. But looks like uh, the Bobcats are trying to get some transition points here early and get the Condors to play on their heels. And that last play, Richie Gordon was called for the foul and sends Tremont Moore to the line for two. Misses on his first one, so McKnight, after Gordon picks up his second foul, will check in. You don't lose much when you have Gordon going to the bench and McKnight coming in. It's not right. They are about the same player. The only difference is the height. Yeah, indeed. The physicality is the same as with both. I think that's, this is where the game may be won. As you see, if we get this, if you get second chance opportunities, you limit your chances of adding more points. The Condors didn't box out there, so you can t let the guy go back to the line, and this time he knocks down the shot. You box out there. You don't have that problem. You get the rebound. So second chance opportunities is one thing that I always like to focus on. And as you had said, Tremont Moore ended up missing both free throws, but Nagel was there for the offensive rebound. He got fouled. Makes one of two, which takes the Condors lead to 26 to 18. Todd Brown found Thomas over to Ballard, then down to McKnight. McKnight trying to find something. Thomas dribbles it off the foot of somebody. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Ballard pulls up for a deep three, and that in one and just out. circles in and out. McKnight there for the offensive rebound, and there are those second chance points you talked about. I believe Ballard kept his composure as he, the ball kicked around, and the shot clock was coming to an end, and he almost hit that fabulous three-point shot, but like I said, second chance opportunities. 
That's that's a big thing to me, man. Derek Hawthorne not getting a lot of his shots to fall, but still taking his shots nonetheless. As I said, averaging about 19 points a game for this Bobcats team. Scrum for the ball on the floor, and looks like we wound up getting a jump ball as Todd Brown and Zachary Douglas were trying to battle for a good hustle there by both teams. I'm sorry, that's Kenny Council that was on the floor. Other than second chance opportunities, hustle points, energy, those are things that's going to continue to help Columbus. It's an 11-2 team. They come in here for a reason that they're 11-2. They obviously been playing in the basketball league, going around, you know, taking names and winning games. So if the Columbus Condors can continue to make hustle plays and limit second chance opportunities, they have a very good chance with a 10 point lead here in the first quarter. Columbus is, seems like they're one of those teams that will make you earn the victory. As Hawthorne ends up finding an open three, can't get that one to fall. As Bosley, who just checked into the game for Ballard, gets that rebound. Kellen Thomas able to blow by his guy, nice. Hands, though, but there by Nega, and Moore was able to get the block. Kenny Council sticks with it and gets his first two points of the game. Well, referee seemed a little shy on that whistle there. It seemed like um, Thomas may have been contacted there, but, hey, we're going to let him play. Like you said, you got to earn these victories here. Nothing will be given to you. Everything is earned. Nega trying to get by Bosley, and Bosley doesn't seem too thrilled about the call, but... After that, Nega is hyped up as he will go to the line for two. And we are going to have a timeout here with 2.45 left in the first quarter. The Columbus Condors have a 30 to 18 lead over the Kokomo Bobcats. And honestly, well, what are you seeing? I know during that last time out, we talked about Columbus. With Kokomo, what are you seeing so far? And I, it's only it's only the first quarter. It's only a 12-point deficit. So you don't count anybody out just yet. But what are you seeing from Kokomo right now? I'm seeing the struggle from the outside shot. They continue to try to hit the shots. And if you don't shoot the shot, you, you won't make it. So they're going to shoot their way out of this slump. And I think, you know, you just take it one possession at a time. They're going to continue to come down and take big shots and try to make big plays. But I, I believe the the transition of Gibson, or excuse me, not the transition, but you know the fall, the falling player of Gibson coming down, that may have shook in the team up a little bit. But them, them seeing him up in the huddle right now, it may give them a little bit of more energy. And like you said, Nega came out of that right before the free throw. He had a little bit more energy. He, he's, he's getting the players involved. So continue, we're, we're going to see them try to pull out of this this slump that they've been having. So they're down, but they're far from out. We still got a lot of game here to be played. And as you said, you know, they will shoot their way out of this slump. And it, it, it's not like they've been taking bad shots. All of their shots have been good shots. Some of them contested, some of them open, and just not quite falling. But as we'd said, this is just the first quarter. And... Nega is at the free throw line for two as he knocks down his first one. Looks like we have a Cheney checking into the game for the Bobcats. Second one is just strong. McKnight was able to get that tip, but the pool, rebound was pulled in by Council. Todd Brown trying to find a lane, ends up dishing it down to Council. Nice reverse layup. Ten, ten, Kenny Council's two point two baskets, both coming on reverse layups as Kenny Council looks to get started here. And he took that in there very strong with Moore being down there looking for the block. Andy Bosley with the ball. Their tra transition offenses, that's a great block there by Zachary Douglas. Welcome to his block party, he said. I see Douglas and Moore down there. They're not going to give up anything easy. You can't just come in there, you know, lackluster-like, thinking you're going to get anything in this paint with Kokomo Bobcats. Brett McKnight not happy with that cause. He's pleading his case that he was straight up, and it looked like he was as Zachary Douglas put his body into him, but nonetheless, Douglas will go to the line for two and knocks down his first one. When you look at the foul difference, I mean, it's a one, one foul difference, but each one of the fouls that Kokomo has earned against Columbus, they've went to the line. 
even though Kokomo may have fouled, they weren't shooting fouls. I believe one. I believe Ballard may have went to the line. But that's where the discrepancy is going to come in. You continue to let this team get to, to the line for free baskets. You're giving up points there. They're doing a great job of limiting their shots. But you can't continue to let these, this team get to the line. And just as you were talking about that, or, or Myas Nega uh, committed a foul on Todd Brown, and they are in the penalty now, so that will send Todd Brown to the line. His first one is up and good. I'm sure Kokomo didn't come in here expecting for Columbus to battle them this much. Six and five, 11 two, you look at the records. But any given Sunday, that's what I love about any sport. It doesn't matter what the records is, it doesn't matter what the stats is. It all comes down to who's gonna come out there and have the heart and determination to win the game. Andy Bosley there contesting Armani Chaney, who just checked into the game moments ago, is able to get his first basket of the game. We look for the difference of the game, and right now, I'm honest just to say that it's, it may be Bosley. You know, I want to see a little bit more defense out of Bosley because any time that you have someone on him, they're, they're, they're picking on Bosley right now. As, uh, Brett McKnight knocks down the long two. Gives them a 36-23 lead over Kokomo here with just over a minute left to play here in the first quarter. Kellen Thomas tightly guarding. Chaney, Chaney trying to find space, but Thomas not giving him any. Here comes Brett McKnight with the help. And before going Great over defense. and defense back, yes. The defense by McKnight and Thomas able to cause the turnover. It's exactly what I said on that last one. You want to make sure you, you play these guys tight. You don't want to give these guys no room for any movement. And Great help defense there. One minute left here in the first quarter. Todd Brown will bring the ball up and set up the offense here as Anthony Stewart checked in for Brett McKnight. Todd Brown with a beautiful crossover step back. Couldn't get the three to go. And we're going to have a loose ball foul? I think that's the same thing Kenny Council is trying to ask. Yeah, the foul will go against Anthony Stewart, who just checked into the game. Once again, I believe we're going to the line. By Council and Stewart's reaction, I'm not sure that they necessarily agree with that call. So we will have Zachary Douglas at the line for Kokomo for two. 45.8 seconds left. Condors look for a potential two for one opportunity here before this quarter ends. So first free throw, no good by Douglas. Let's see if they can box out here. No need to box out, second basket, it's good. Kellen Thomas is able to go coast to coast with it. And uh, I believe that is Cheney who picked up that foul. Yes, Armani Indeed. Cheney. And we'll send Kellen Thomas to the line for two. So looks like the uh, the Condors are trying to get a potential two for one opportunity here before this quarter ends. But with 38 seconds left, it looks like the uh, Kokomo Bobcats have an opportunity to do it as well. Kellen Thomas only knocks down one of two. Monty Chaney finds a cutting. Ermanis, Ermias Nega. That's a great move there for Nega. About a two, three second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. 15 seconds left. Kellen Thomas passes down to Anthony Stewart on the baseline, who then ends up turning it over. And uh, Cheney finds uh, Ar Armias Nega. Todd Brown just, just wasn't able. Four seconds here. Todd Brown steps into it. Long three. That one's just short. No good. And after one quarter of play, the Columbus Condors 
are up against the Kokomo Bobcats by a score of 37 to 28. Then we will go ahead and take a short break and be back right after this. You're watching TBL Basketball here on the Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. <laughs> back here at the United Sports Center in Columbus, Ohio, where the second quarter has just gotten underway as the Columbus Condors have a 37 to 28 lead over the Kokomo Bobcats, Seth Donahoe alongside Will Warden. Will, what did you make of that first quarter between both teams? I think both teams came out and they just felt each other out. It was a fill out period there in the first quarter. Uh, Columbus probably got what they wanted and I don't think Kokomo got what they were was expecting to start out the game. But I don't they're far from done. Down eleven right now. We'll see what they do to come out here in the second quarter. And after uh, one quarter of play, as uh, that one is Zachary Douglas is able to get the basket after uh, Ermias Nega had lost the ball and Ermias Nega coming off the bench and leading the Kokomo Bobcats with nine points, providing good minutes off the bench for the Bobcats. And uh, Boo Osborne missed three. Some Condors not happy with that out of bounds call. Coming back Kokomo's way. But nonetheless, it will be the Bobcats ball as AJ Patty, who picked up two quick fouls for Kokomo, checks back in. As well as uh, Armin Bridgeforth. As I had said, Nega leading the uh, Bobcats with a uh, nine points. Then at start, came off the bench and providing good minutes for the Kokomo team. And uh, on the Columbus Condor side, Cody Ballard starting out strong, getting his first couple baskets in and around the paint. And then able to, that opened up his three point shooting ability as he has 11 and Richie Gordon back into the lineup the past, uh, last game with eight points and Todd Brown having six as well. Richie Gordon was looking to get a foul and a slightly delayed whistle, and he ended up getting it as uh, he caught Douglas reaching. As I stated before, everything is earned and not given. And I thought he might have earned a shot there, but obviously he didn't sell it enough. So, going to have ball out of bounds here for the Condors. It, it looked like he had definitely uh, made the intention of making a shooting motion, but... Referee wasn't fooled, though. No. No, not, a, not at all. Get some things situated here. 14 seconds on the shot clock, the official says, as Ballard will inbound it to McKnight. 
Nice pass there by Ballard. Great pass by Ballard. Three people around McKnight, and he's still able to finish. I don't know if that was good hands or a great pass. Whatever it was, it earned two points for the uh, Condors. Bridge fourth with the ball. Too much talking there by McKnight. Just earned him a technical foul. And uh, A.J. Patty, who has not been in the game very long, picking up two quick fouls in the first quarter, checking in late at the end of the first quarter with only 10 or 20 seconds left. And now not even two minutes into the second quarter, and uh, he just doesn't look like he's in the flow of the game right now. Nah, not at all. He's trying to warm up, but I believe whatever it was that McKnight was saying that earned him a technical, he, he pretty much earned it. So and, uh, I'm pretty sure he's probably trying to – he's saying that that pass, maybe he's arguing that his hands, it wasn't the pass, it was the hands. Three guys, that's what you see him explaining right now, three guys. I just caught a ball over three guys right now. And uh, Brett McKnight is one of those players who uh, – it's not afraid to let you hear it. And he's still talking to him right now as he got the ball in his hands. Nothing easy is what's going to be going on right now. Body's on the floor. Yes. Whoa. That'll be uh, Boo Osborne, who's able to step in front of uh, Derek Hawthorne. And Hawthorne will be picked up, or will be charged with the offensive foul. This game is not only getting physical, it's getting more entertaining by the trash talk that's going on on the court. And it, it's making the players, you know, their emotion is, 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 is getting the best of each other. But it's, it makes for a very entertaining game. And that's what we want to hear in Columbus right now. And McKnight for three, wide open three, couldn't knock it down. And I think Kokomo better be excited that they, he didn't knock that down because it probably would have been a lot more chatter out of McKnight. That ball was uh, kicked out to Patty in the corner, who's able to knock down his first three-pointer of the game. And it's a 41-31 lead for the Condors. Still a double-digit game here. Official timeout for a wet spot. But as we were, were saying, you know, we are used to seeing this out of Brett McKnight. Brett McKnight is one of those players who he is confident in his game, confident in his ability, and, and until you stop him, he will not stop. Indeed, indeed. I believe that he likes to get up under the skin of the other players. I constantly see him, you know, a lot of chatter that goes on big night. Fun and nothing that's malicious or anything. But once he gets up under your skin, he's got in your head. And now you just can't get out of it. And now you're, you're arguing back and forth with him. You're in a slump. So I like that chatter that, you know, McKnight brings to the game. Cody Ballard drives to the basket, and Derek Hawthorne will pick up his second foul. Just as many fouls within the past minute. And that'll send Cody Ballard to the line. Uh, Brett McKnight, one of the leading scorers on this Columbus Condors team, averaging 23.7 points a game and 6.7 rebounds. Been one of the big focal points for this team. Cody Ballard knocked down his first one. Second, Second one pass is good. It's up and good. Back to a double-digit lead. 43-33 with 9.20 left here in the second quarter. Patty with the ball for the Bobcats. Swings it out to Hawthorne, then over to Nega. Nega trying to find something along the baseline, but Richie Gordon denies him. Six seconds on the shot clock. Hawthorne will take a contested three. That one's no good. Yeah, I thought it was going to stay there. It might have been off of McKnight there. Yeah, that will be the case as the official said it was last touched off the Condors. Hawthorne to inbound it. Finds Douglas, and she shuffled his feet before he could get a dribble. Too much of the shoes still on the ground. Those red shoes didn't move. That's the ball stayed in those in his hands too long. Mm -hmm. but still 43 to 33 here. Ballard is going to set things up here for Columbus. Double screen by Gordon and McKnight. McKnight with the ball now finds Gordon down low. Gordon couldn't get that layup to finish. Good defense there by Douglas. 
That was a pretty quick uh, toss-up there by Gordon. Maybe he felt that he had the shot, but could have took his time a little bit more and bodied him down. Good defense there. Good help defense, open shot. No knockdown. Rebound by McKnight. Nega couldn't get that three to go in the kick out from Patty. Brett McKnight now with the ball. Finds a wide open Boo Osborne. Osborne thought about the three. Then he will take a step back three and gets that one to fall. Took the contested three-point shot instead of taking a wide open and knocked it down right in his face, man. Take some of that. Andy Bosley still applying that full court pressure. Bridge fourth with the ball. Hands it off to Patty. And it uh, looks like they're going to get Brett McKnight for this foul. As it seemed like he was in good position. Brett McKnight not too happy with that call. I thought he played strong physical defense. This matchup between McKnight and Patty is getting very physical. Like I said before, very entertaining. Nega will end up taking that three. That one's no good. Long rebound goes out of bounds and will go the Condor's way. So we have Kenny Council checking in for McKnight. I'm sure Patty's not. I'm pretty sure he's excited to see him go onto the bench. I guess we will see what happens. With that, as the uh, Condors have a 46-33 lead here, 7.45 left in the second. Todd Brown with the ball. Gets the ball to Cody Ballard. And while in mid-air, Ballard's able to get that layup to fall. Kokomo trying to set something up here. They need to, you know, they need points here. They can't continue to let Columbus go down on the offensive side and continue to get buckets, and they get in, nothing there. And right there, Ty Brown comes up with the rebound. Ballard pushes up court. Step back three. Couldn't now get it. Got halfway down before rimming out. Ballard's definitely not afraid to shoot any type of shots. Fadeaways, three-point shots. And now we have Richie Gordon battling against A.J. Patty. They go with the ball. Three seconds left on the shot clock. And that one will be a, a double dribble violation. Yes, as he, uh, as the ball seemed to go off of his face or his chest. And that makes McKnight very excited there on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen him come out to almost midcourt and uh, made sure he let the Kokomo Bobcats hear it. So we will have a timeout here with 6.48 left in the seconds and the Columbus Condors have a 15 point lead, 48 to 33 over the number one seed. Right now in the Midwest standings, the Kokomo Bobcats and well, it looks like the Condors are kind of taking control of this game. They are, they are. And as maybe you can hear playing over the loudspeaker, Columbus is definitely coming and saying, we're right here, we're not going anywhere. So if you want to win this game, you're going to have to come with every single thing you got. You're 11 and two, and we're intended to make sure you leave out of here at 11 and three. So welcome to Columbus. You know, we play dirty, we play gritty, we play fair, but we're going to make sure that you have to earn this win. So anything that you have to do, we're making sure you're sending them back to Indiana. You know, a little bit more beat up, a little bit more battered, and to let them know that, hey, in Columbus, the record may say one thing, but the play is going to say a whole nother. So we're right here. And for Kokomo, coming out of this timeout, and for Kokomo, uh, coming out of this timeout, what are they going to have to do uh, to try and get this deficit to within single digits? They're going to try to have to figure out how to stop, you know, players like Ballard that's kind of taking over the game and just try to make sure, you know, you don't let McKnight get out of your head. You know, as you can see here, Osborne, he comes up the court and swings it over to, to Brown, and he's getting it right in to Ballard, who's, who's, his, his physicality is, is obviously taking over the game, you know. So one thing that Kokomo has to continue to do is not let McKnight get in their head and figure out how to stop the offensive production out of the Condors. And uh, Cody Ballard leading the Condors right now with 15 points. A.J. Patty and the Bobcats with the ball right now. Hawthorne trying to find some space. None of the Condors are giving him any. Boo Osborne with Bridgeforth. Guarding Bridgeforth uh, couldn't get that one to fall. Richie Gordon with the full court pass and a beautiful, beautiful on the money pass to Kenny Council. 
Hey, right, touchdown by Council. He just walked right into the end zone on that one. <laughs> Beautiful pass there by Richie Gordon. You couldn't have it any more perfect than that throw right there. That gives uh, the Condors a 50-33 lead as Patty will take a deep three. That one's no good. Bridgeforth able to tip out the offensive rebound to Patty, and they'll throw it up court or up to the top of the key to Hawthorne to set it up. Seven seconds left here on the shot clock. Patty got double teamed by Brown and Ballard. And A.J. Patty just looks a little disgruntled right now. Can't seem to get into the flow of the game. He can't at all. I mean, at least he has a smile on his face right now. I'll let you know that it's all fun and, you know, good entertaining. But he definitely is saying that the Columbus Condors are definitely in his head. No, no, Maybe. that shot will not count. That is a shot clock violation as they only had three seconds left. Uh, when they inbounded the pass, just couldn't quite, Hawthorne just couldn't quite get it out of his hands in time. And that is uh, the second shot clock violation that the Condors have caused for Kokomo. What that means is phenomenal defense all throughout the 24 seconds. They're not letting Kokomo get anything for free. The stifling defense is going to continue to be there for him the Condors. Armand Bridgeforth picks up his first foul of the game. And Cody Ballard trying to pick up right where he left off. Nice little fadeaway, but good defense there by Hawthorne as he didn't give him anything easy. A.J. Patty with a bullet right over the hands of Tremont Moore. I don't think Moore was quite ready for that one. Now nah, Moore wasn't ready and another turnover, which let's see if the uh, Condors can capitalize here. Boo Osborne setting things up for the Condors. Finds Todd Brown in the corner. Couldn't get that long two to go as his toe was on the line. Ballard there able to get the offensive rebound. Finds Richie Gordon on the other end. Kenny Council, and he tried to be sneaky, but his the back of his foot did hit the line. He's trying to sell it like that was the wrong call. But, you know, unfortunately from up here, we could see it. And Kokomo quickly the other way. Nega, that one dribbles it off of his own foot out of bounds. And I think the uh, the past two or three possessions for Kokomo has resulted in turnovers. Indeed it has. So if you're a Kokomo, maybe you want to slow down and try to set up a little bit, set a play as you see Ballard coming up court, setting it up here. I think that's what Kokomo may need, may need to do so they can get some offensive production. 440 left here in the second, 50-33 lead still. For Columbus, Todd Brown with the ball kicks it out to Councilman. Council, Council ends up losing it. Bridgeforth quickly the other way with a nice Euro step there by Armand Bridgeforth. Got the ball, he knew what he wanted to do with it. Still no offense, you know, it wasn't set up, but sometimes you just got to take it and go. That transition offense did help him out there. Richie Gordon couldn't get that long range. Jumper to fall, but the ball fell right into the hands of Kenny Council. Bridgeforth to Nega, then to Hawthorne, then over to Patty. Down low to Moore. Moore will try the turnaround mid-range jumper, and Tremont Moore is able to get that one to fall. Kellen Thomas. This is off to Richie Gordon. Richie Gordon using his size and strength to be able to knock A.J. Patty off balance. It's all body to body. Physicality. It's going to be real physical here. A lot of congestion up here at the top of the key. Nagel will end up taking the free throw line jumper, but that one's no good. And Ballard quickly comes the other way. Gives it up to Todd Brown. Todd Brown trying to find something. Finds it to Richie, then to Ballard, who will take that three. That one's just off the mark. Hawthorne. I'm sorry, that's Bridgeforth the other way. Tremont Moore will use his size over the smaller Kellen Thomas to be able to get his to fall. Looks like he got that one. Feet were outside of the restricted area and you got your charge there for Patty. It's a great defense there, and that's right what you need to you know, you don't want to go into halftime still struggling on offense. We will have a uh, timeout here by Kokomo with 2.55 remaining in the second as the Columbus Condors have a 54-39 to 39 lead. 
So we check out the replay here. And we see that, yes, his feet were outside of restricted area. So counsel, the only reason to argue there, you know, get back on defense and, you know, see if you can stop him. Because Kokomo, they may, they may be trying to heat up here, like I've said before, to go into halftime, you know, maybe down by just a 10-point lead or whatever they can do to get this lead down, they're going to continue to fight. So Columbus has to keep push, keep pushing and keep making sure that this lead does not go into the favor of the Bobcats. And uh, with just under three minutes left here in the second, what would you like to see Kokomo try to do to get this deficit to single digits? I want to see him continue to be composed and, like I said, maybe set up more offensive production. Um, limit Columbus, who's going to be trying to slow the, the tempo down to get the clock down to get into halftime. But I just want to see them get more, you know, come out of this timeout here. Let's see if they set up anything or what they drew up and see if they can get some buckets here. If you're Columbus, you can't afford to be lackadaisical. You got to make sure that you still can play, continue to play strong basketball. Tremont Moore ends up with the ball, trying to find a, trying to find a lane, but Todd Brown is able to poke that one away. Todd Brown swings it out to Kellen Thomas, then who gives it back to Todd Brown. Todd Brown thought about the three. Todd Brown will take the floater. And that one's just a little bit too strong. Bridge fourth, bringing the ball up. Bosley trying to guard Patty. That one is no good, but the offensive Travel. rebound is there. Oh, foul on the floor. And McKnight is actually going to pick up that foul. And you see McKnight quickly goes to the bench. And as the coach is telling McKnight, you got to get a body on him. If you box out and you get physical with him, he doesn't get that second chance opportunity. That's that word again. He doesn't get the second chance opportunity, and we don't have that foul. So here we go once again. Brett McKnight picking up his third foul. And... Uh, a poor, a poor pass by Derek Hawthorne as Nagel wasn't able to get his hands on it, and they turn it over. Turnovers really haunting the, uh, the Bobcats here in the second quarter, especially. Todd Brown gets it out to Thomas, who finds Bosley. Bosley will take that one, that three. That one missed everything. Just a little breezy, just a little breezy, you know. He's, he's still trying to fill it out. I believe that might have been his first shot attempt of the game. Got to come in a little bit closer. Mid-range shot, maybe, Bosley. Not the three. Great attempt, though. There's a wide open, you know, shot. Hawthorne over to Nega, then throws it down to Moore. Patty down low, posted up against the shorter Todd Brown, but Todd Brown not giving him any space. Nega ends up with the ball in his hands. Then back to Patty against Todd Brown. Nice spin move there by Patty as he's able to get that one to fall. And they're pushing, 13 point lead here for the Condors. Kellen Thomas with a quick shot, that one's no good. He ends up with the ball in his hands. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Cody Ballard throws it over to Todd Brown, five seconds left on the clock. He's getting the saucy with him, step back three point shot by, almost hit that one right before the buzzer. Long rebound goes to Ermias Nega. Throws it up to Hawthorne, then swings it over to Bridgeforth. Bridgeforth will take that three. That one's no good. Good box out there. Good box out there by Andy Bosley. As he's going to. That was a great, AJ great Patty. box out there by Bosley. Yeah, A.J. Patty now picks up his third foul. Good job there by Bosley to make sure he secured that box out. And if Patty wanted to have any chance to get it, he was going to have to go through or around him. Got 47 seconds left here in the second quarter. 13-point lead, can be pushed to 16, but not right now. Hawthorne there with the rebound, gives it to Nega, who quickly comes the other way. That three by Nega is good, and Nega is having himself a solid first half, as that's his first basket of the quarter. But he has 12 points right now for the Bobcats. 26 seconds left, 54-44 lead for the Condors. And this is right where Kokomo wants to be. Don't panic, don't panic is what they've been saying to each other all throughout the game. So they're right where they need to be, a 10-point lead right before, you know, the half. And they may have a chance right here to pull it down within single digits. Six seconds left here. Boo Osborne tries to 
cause a turnover. T this is it over to Nega. Hawthorne will pull up from Nega is shot! And he gets down! That's how you want to go into halftime if you're Kokomo, right there. Don't take too much energy, but right there is what you wanted to have. I told you, man. And it looked like... It looked like it's good it looked, for me. It looked like Trey Mont Moore didn't even realize how much time was on the clock as he casually passed it to Nega. Hey, that was a logo shot, and he stepped right into it confidently. That was just a step-up shot. Great shot there. That's and uh, be because of that three, they found something to do to get this deficit to within single digits as they go into halftime, trailing the Condors 47-54. to 54. Uh, Well, a couple of the tur turnovers kind of haunted the Kokomo Bobcats there in the second quarter especially. They, they did, but composure and experience, 11-2 doesn't just come, you know, by no reason. It's all organic with Kokomo right now. And you see it kept their composure, and right now, down by seven, you're right where you want to be. They had a double-digit lead, and they're still right here, but we want to just keep our thoughts and prayers with the family of A.J. Davis, you know, one of the fallen condors, you know. Can you make sure that, you know, keep them in your prayers and also donate? to the A.J. Davis Support Fund. You see the logo on the, the screen at the GoFundMe. It's an unfortunate thing that happened to him, but like I said, keep him in your prayers, families of A.J. Davis and also A.J. Davis himself. Yeah, that is GoFund.me slash 7E981D8C uh, to contribute to this A.J. Davis Support Fund as he was uh, in a horrific ap accident a couple weeks ago and you know, as we said, we send the prayers and our thoughts to him, his family, and everyone involved in the Columbus Condors community. So before we go ahead and wrap this up, Will, real quick, tell me what Columbus has to do in order to uh, make sure they come out uh, not on fire, but cal calm, composed, and don't do anything to give Kokomo the lead early in the third. They have to come out and they have to keep their heads. We had a lot of taunting and a lot of, you know, gestures that were going back and forth with McKnight and Patty. At the end of the day, we're coming out here to play basketball. It's all fun and games, you know, to, to chit-chat, but at the same time, you want to get buckets. You want to get, you know, limit the second chance opportunities. You want to make sure you're doing the things that you do to, to win the game. So Columbus has to come out here and stop what's quite frankly may be a hot team of Kokomo coming out. They, they dropped the lead under double digits, so Kokomo is ready. All right, well, we should be in for an exciting second half. That should be just as exciting as the first one. We will go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we will have the second half ready to go for you. This is TBL Basketball here on the Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675.
Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. 
you'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a... Welcome back in here to the United Sports Center for today's TBL matchup between the Columbus Condors and the Kokomo Bobcats. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, to donate to the A.J. Davis Support Fund, please visit GoFundMe, GoFund.me slash 7E981D8C. Again, our thoughts and prayers go out to A.J. Davis, his friends, his family, and everyone here in the Columbus Condor community. For Seth Donahoe, I... Wow, messed that up. <laughs> I am Seth Donahoe, and alongside me is Will Ward, and our, uh, our, the Columbus Condor is having a 54 to 47 lead over the, uh, the top seed, the top ranked team in the Midwest, rather, in the Kokomo Bobcats. Uh, what are you seeing so far, Will, out of the Condors that have been able to help them establish this lead? The Condors got out to this lead by knocking down big shots and also limiting Kokomo to the shots that they've been able to take. Um, a little bit of pestering defense by McKnight that has helped them out. As we see here, Kokomo swinging the ball around. Columbus isn't hesitant to, to lock in and get you know physical at any moment. So you see the strip there by Brown. They're looking for any opportunity that they can to pester Kokomo, to get in their heads a little bit. And when you can have transition defense to turn into offense, even though they didn't knock the shot down there, they're still able to do the things that they've, they're they kind of set out to do. So if Columbus can continue to stop them on both sides of the ball, limit second chance opportunities, and also you know let this lead grow and not let Kokomo come back into this game, Kokomo is looking to, to fire back. You know, they're down, but they're far from out. So with the second half beginning, it's going to go down to the wire here. That's what I believe. I believe it's going to be one of those last second, you know, games 
It's going to be one of those final possession games. Whoever makes the least mistakes, second chance opportunities, and got to make high percentage shots. So here we go with the second half. Scoring so far for the Kokomo Bobcats. Coming off the bench, Amias Nega has 12 points. Um, Derek Hawthorne having nine. Trey Mount Moore with eight. And A.J. Patty with seven. And for the Condors, Cody Ballard leading the way with 15. Richie Gordon also in double digits with 12. Kenny Council has eight. And Brett McKnight has eight as well. First couple possessions come up empty. Uh, Cody Ballard ends up throwing it to uh, off the backboard. Not sure what that play was designed for, but nonetheless, Kokomo quickly comes the other way, and A.J. Patty gets the first point in this second half. To Osborne by the cutting uh, Andy Bosley on the back door pass. Great find there by Boo Osborne. I would say that Columbus is trying to get Bosley. That's two times down court they try to get the ball to him. So obviously it's getting Bosley involved in this offense. Bosley only having one point in the first half. Now having three after making that layup. And it's nice to see uh, Martrellius Gibson back into the game. That's number 24 for the Kokomo Bobcats after that scary fall early in the first quarter. Boo Osborne takes a step back, but that one's off the mark. But he might say that was a pass to Richie Gordon as he was there to get that miss. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's not going to get the assist for that one, though. 58-49 <laughs> lead here for him. And uh, they just said it over the loudspeaker, assist to Boo Osborne. Hey, a little bit of charity work there. Martellius Gibson ends up knocking that shot down. And I'm sure that the Kokomo Bobcats are happy to see him back on the court, not only because he just knocked a big shot, but just for the, the sake of the team. Andy Bosley with the ball. Finds Ballard. Ballard trying to find some space. He'll end up pulling up for the three. That one just strong. McKnight there for the offensive rebound against A.J. Patty. And uh, we've seen them there in the second quarter going back and forth. And I'm sure that'll continue here into the second half. Indeed. McKnight and Patty, I think that may be where the game is going to lie inside of the paint. Whoever can box out and get their team, their team second chance opportunities. I, just, I like the second chance opportunity word if you haven't caught on yet, but I, I I've, just, I've, heard, I've heard you mention it a couple times. It, it, it's something. It's I think that's a key thing between second chance opportunities and high percentage shots. That's it's certain things that you know high percentage shot there. The certain things that have to happen in order for a team to continue to be successful. Brett McKnight starting the Condors off strong here in the second half with five points early in this third quarter, giving them a 63-51 lead with 9:15. Cody Ballard guarding Hawthorne, and Hawthorne is going to pick up that offensive foul as he uh, definitely extended that arm on the push off against Cody Ballard. He extended his arm, but I, I would extend my arm to give Ballard an Oscar at this point because he sold that one very well. He earned the call, and here we are with the Condors with the ball. It may have been a hand extension there, but... I think he may have sold just a little bit. Poor offensive possession there for the Condors as they turn that one over. Hawthorne, he'll end up taking that three. That one just off the mark. McKnight there for the rebound. Cody Ballard pushes the other way for the Condors. Hawthorne trying to get in front of him, make sure he doesn't foul him. And a nice find to the cutting Richie Gordon as he had the slightly shorter Tremont Moore guarding him. Gordon's fabulous. That's, I believe, like the second or third up and under that he's come with. He's definitely been practicing that one. Two possessions in a row. They've tried to get Richie Gordon going on the uh, on the back door cuts. The last one resulting in a turnover, but was able to capitalize on that one. And that ball, the ref says, last went off of Moore as it traveled out of bounds. So the Condors will take possession. Oh, and a beautiful touch pass there. Beautiful touch pass. By Richie Gordon. As uh, I don't think anybody except McKnight was expecting that one. <laughs> that was it. I don't think uh, the Bobcats had a chance to even react to it. The pass was so quick. All they do is uh, reach out and foul on that one. 
I believe that was Bridgeforth who picked up that foul. Don't quote me on that one, but if it is, that's his second. So McKnight is at the line to shoot two. Rattles the first one in. Not for sure if it was on, I want to say it might have been Gibson. We see that. And uh, McKnight here comes that down. quick touch pass. Uh, that one so, was yeah, on it was on Gibson there. So that is Marcelli and Gibson's first. As McKnight was able to knock down both of them. It gives them a 67-51 lead. A.J. Patty going against Richie Gordon. Good active hands there by Ballard and Gordon. Yeah. They were able to knock that one out of Patty's hands, but it'll stay with the Bobcats. Yeah, they both were fighting for the ball, and I think they both tipped it out. Hawthorne to inbound four. The Bobcats, Andy Bosley, and that is Hawthorne who go after it. Last touch by Bosley, so no over and back. Hawthorne trying to find a lane. I'm sorry, that was Bridgeforth. Hawthorne ended up trying to find a lane. And the ball never hit the rim as uh, Hawthorne wanted a foul against McKnight, but McKnight was just standing there with his hands straight up. Yeah, the ball never hit the rim, but I believe um, Hawthorne, he, he just ran to a brick wall there. So. And it is a, McKnight is a sturdy guy. It is difficult to make a guy of his size and strength move. But McKnight not giving up anything easily. So here we are with the Condors. And McKnight giving a terrible pass, trying to throw it into Ballard. That one was a bad pass. Hawthorne was able to uh, take it the other way and go all the way by himself. Yeah, we took, definitely took that one coast to coast. He's, uh, he's, he's really going to start warming up here in the second half, I believe, Hawthorne. Richie Gordon was trying to do a little bit of work against Patty, couldn't get it to fall, but Bosley was there for the offensive rebound. Boo Osborne ends up kicking it out to Cody Ballard. Cody Ballard will take that with three. That one's off the mark, but Gordon there for the offensive rebound, and he can't believe he couldn't get that one to fall. It's a little bit too strong there by Gordon. Upset with himself. I was surprised to see Ballard miss that three-point shot there. Wide open, you know, he usually knocks that one down every single time. Cody Ballard not happy with the fault with the foul that's going to be called against him. And that'll be uh, Ballard's first here of the game. And we will have a timeout here with 651 left in the third quarter and the Condors having a 67 to 53 lead and well as we kind of mentioned when we came back uh, you know the Condors not really doing anything to give up this lead you know they they know they're going against the top ranked team in the Midwest uh, division and what are you seeing so far at the start of the second quarter that uh, Columbus is capitalizing on Columbus has um I like to use a lot of football analogies. Two touchdown lead right here. And I think they're just trying to continue to keep that lead. So whatever you have to do to make sure that you're not going, you know, down any, you can, of course, go up. But you don't want to really go down. So they're, they're limiting that production of offense by Kokomo. But one thing that they have to continue to do is not turn the ball over. We've seen in a replay of a minute ago is a turnover that led to quick offense by Kokomo. So, and again, I'm going to say this now and see if it happens. Uh, Hawthorne is heating up. So you have to stop him now or you're going to have a problem because with the addition of Gibson back into the game, it gives them a dynamic duo that they're going to feed off each other and they're going to have to figure out how to stop them both. And uh, Martrelli and Gibson only averaging about four points a game and two rebounds a game. But it's not all about the statistics. As you can see what he does on the court, he is definitely a big part in this team and why they are successful. So like, out of this timeout, I'm sorry, go ahead, Will. As, uh, as, as I was just saying, <laughs> Gibson, sir. It, it, you throw all the stats out of the window. You can throw stats. You can, when you have a team that's 11 and two and you're down right now, you're doing anything you can do to crawl and scratch and fight to get back into this game. So it's going to be who has the more, you know, the mental part of an experienced players to come back to this game. And there you have Gibson with another rebound. 
the addition of Gibson back onto the ground, when you had a player that goes down the way he did and now he's back into the game, you can only feed off of his energy that he has. And you can tell he's definitely feeling motivated to help his team to try and regain this lead. As, as we had said, he went down early in the first quarter after landing awkwardly. But here in the second half, Gibson having five points as Hawthorne isn't able to get that one to fall. Quickly rebound by uh, Osborne up ahead to Ballard. Finds Todd Brown, and good job by Columbus not forcing anything. They didn't see that they had a shot. They didn't try to force anything. Boo Osborne ends up with the ball in his hands. Richie Gordon against the smaller Derek Hawthorne. And another up and under by uh, Richie Gordon. Gordon is just having his way down there in the paint. Once he gets so far down inside the paint, it's, it's kind of hard to stop him. Tried the, he tried the Gordon there. Not as... Not as successful as Gordon has been. Richie Gordon, uh, he knew what he was doing as he tried to, or is it, he's already successfully completed a few of those up and under, so he knew what to look out for. And Cody Ballard coming the other way quickly, and Derek Hawthorne picks up the foul, and I believe that is his fourth foul. And you see he tried the same move, but you know, Gordon wasn't fooled by that one. Ball inbounded to Osborne, who gets it down low to Brett McKnight. Nice spin move there by Moore as he tried to reach and knock the ball out, but great post move by Brett McKnight. Yeah, hey, you call him Brett McKnight there, but I might want to call him Booker T. A little spinner Rooney did he have right there, you know? I don't know if you could catch a WWE, that reference, but you check how he just brought him down, spinner Rooney right there, and boom, two points and to the line. And uh, we see Marcel Kenner checking into the game for the first time for Kokomo. For uh, Derek Hawthorne as Hawthorne is in foul trouble. McKnight can't convert on the end one though. Bridgeforth comes the other way for Kokomo. Throws it over to Moore and then gives it off to Patty. Then back up to Gibson. Gibson trying to find a shot and no, uh, no help there by anybody as Richie Gordon looks confused about who should have picked him up there. I don't think anybody wanted to help at that point because if you help, you might have ended up on a poster and maybe on SC Top 10 there because Gibson's coming, man. Gibson's coming, and right there, uh, excuse me, Ballard's saying, you got to come a little bit harder. We're still here. Tremont Moore with the ball on the baseline. Great active hands there by Cody Ballard as he knocked it out of Moore and it last went off of his leg. So another turnover for the Bobcats. 4.38 left to go here in the third. Condors with a 73 to 58 lead. Todd Brown will bring the ball up for Columbus. Set something up, Co looking to get the ball to, I assume, Cody Ballard. Richie. Definitely a mismatch down there with Ballard. Oh, brought him blocking, his feet were moving. Wasn't set. That is uh, Martrellian Gibson who will pick up that foul. He can't believe it. He thought he was in position. He thought Richie Gordon was coming in a little hot and reckless. Indeed, I did see the same thing. But the ref did not see it that way, so. That's why they're the ones with the whistles and we're not. Indeed. <laughs> I just noticed usually you have the, you know, the black and white stripes by the referees, not here in the TBL. A little bit of old school, all-star game-ish type uniforms for the referees. Ball inbound to Richie Gordon, A.J. Patty. Good defense there by Patty against Gordon. Marcel Kenner, he'll step in and take a long two. That one's no good. Not for sure. We've seen Kenner in the first half, but he's definitely made his uh, appearance here, and he's about to get taken to school here by Ballard, but he did just enough to keep him out of the paint. Here comes the trap defense, but Armand Br Oh! Phenomenal! Mr. Gibson, I told you to watch out for him, and this is why he's in the game. I continue to say he's going to be an electrifying player, and this is what I was trying to warn you about. Even though they came in, you see him, no contested, no shot was contested there, and he had to put back there. Todd Brown kicks it out to Ballard, who then kicks, gives it to Thomas. Couldn't quite get a handle on that one, and Martrellian Gibson having himself a great second half so far. 
having seven points. A beautiful putback dunk. And with the ball in his hands again. And he is he's starting heating to up. Heat up. Matter of fact, he's on fire. <laughs> he's not heating up. Having he's here and he's ready to play, man. Cuts the lead, or cuts the deficit, excuse me, to 11, 73, 62. And what do you know, Marcellian Gibson with a quick active hands, tried to go all the way but couldn't get it to fall. Council with the rebound, Todd Brown quickly coming the other way. Marcellian Gibson all over him. Todd Brown kicks it out to Richie Gordon, who then kicks it out to Thomas. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Trying to find a good high percentage shot as Cody Ballard can't get that one to fall. Patty with the defensive rebound, gives it to Bridgeforth. He'll come the other way. Gives it out to Gibson. Gibson kicks it out to Kenner. Thought about the long two. And uh, just looked a little out of control as Kenner tried to go up for that layup. Yeah, Columbus, they're still in control of this game, even though, you know, you've seen the emergence of Gibson and the electrification that I was trying to tell you about and warned you about. Columbus still has an 11-point lead, and it's looking to extend that lead. So they're still in control of this game. So you don't have to push the panic button just yet. You see coach for Columbus Condors. He hasn't caught time out here. You know, so he still feels that his team is in control. But here we are with the timeout by the Bobcats. 2.07 left here in the third quarter, 73-62. And we're going to be getting another look at this beautiful putback dunk here. Bridgeforth, after the turnover, pushing it up the floor. Ballard and Thomas tried to trap him. And then Gibson just comes in uncontested. Everyone was so worried about what Bridgeforth was going to do and if he was going to make that, that no one accounted for uh, Gibson. Yeah, Gibson's definitely, he's in the game and he's ready to play. He was out most of the first half. But it, like I seen something in him in the, in, in the beginning of the, excuse me, in the beginning of the game and warm-ups between him and Hawthorne, where I just knew it was going to be something special. I knew they were like highlight type players. So we, I knew with him coming back, even though he may have averaged only so many points during a regular season, he's one of those type of players that the team feeds off of. Marcellian Gibson has nine points in this quarter alone. Has nine of the 13 total points in this quarter for the Bobcats. But that last foul committed by Marcel Kenner as Kellen Thomas was driving will send uh, Thomas to the line for two. And that first one is just strong. You see Ballard being a floor general there, commanding who he wants each one to get in case of a missed free throw there. Knocks down the second one. That's 74-62 lead for the Condors. Bridgeport trying to get past Thomas. Ends up passing it off to Marcel Kenner, who he's able to get that layup to go for his first points of the game. Kokomo coach must know something to keep him on the bench for the second half. And great find there by Cody Ballard to get it to the backside of Brett McKnight. He had a... Uh, I believe that was more draped all over him, but was still able to finish. And Marcel Kenner just cuts back door. Ballard not happy with the way his team is playing defense right now, giving up too many easy baskets. Yeah, but as you may have seen, Ty Brown, hey, calm down, calm down, don't panic. He tried to take it in there, but not today. And here we go again. And guess who it is? That's Martrellian Gibson with another Basket, he's got 11 in the quarter. Cody Ballard. Kokomo tell him to turn it up. Down low to Brett McKnight. Marcel Kenner's there with the help. A bad pass by McKnight. Cody Ballard wanted a better pass, so he could probably have a, a chance on that three. Last touch by Gibson, I believe. Will stay with the Condors. Three seconds left on the shot clock. McKnight gets the pass, but couldn't get it to fall. And the other way comes Kokomo, and yeah, Council will uh, 
will get called for that one as Bridgeforth was going all the way to the basket. Council couldn't slow down in time. And we see here great active hands by the Kokomo defense, which ended up leading to a quick transition basket for the Bobcats. I think Columbus is just trying to get out of this quarter uh, unscathed just a little bit. I mean, you got pretty much an eight-point lead right now, and Kokomo has their foot on the gas, and they have high-octane performance right now. Great hands by Council, but the referee didn't think so. Kenny Council not happy with that call. It looked like he got all ball on that play, but the ref seen that he had reached in and must have gotten his arms on the way up as Tremont Moore is going to go to the line for two. I thought it was all ball, you know, no hands. But, hey, once again, that's why Council and I, neither one of us have the whistle. First one for Moore was up and good. The second one is able to fall. I mean, the 76-70 lead for the Condors. 35 seconds left here in the third. Todd Brown going to bring the ball up for the Condors. Looking a little stagnant right here, the Condors are. But Todd Brown ends up finding a lane, is able to get that one to fall. Marcel Kenner comes the other way. For Kokomo ends up getting that one to fall. Kenner's got six points in this quarter. Ten seconds left, 78-72. Condor lead, Todd Brown with the ball. Going to try and find that last second shot. He'll end up taking a step back three. Gets that one up, no good. Kenner with the rebound, and with that, with that, the Condors have a 78-72 lead after three quarters. Real quick, Will, both teams. It looks like the Condors were starting to get a little flustered as uh, Kokomo was starting to pick up the intensity. What are you expecting here in this fourth quarter? I'm expecting to see a lot more Gibson. I'm expecting to see a lot more Hawthorne. And I'm expecting to see this Bobcat team to continue to try to come back and fight. You're down six right now. You're pretty much right where you want to be at. You cut a 14-point lead down to six points in one half. And you have players that have been sitting on the bench in Kenner and in Gibson and to help out the player of Hawthorne. So whatever you have to do, they're doing it right now. And we can see it by the scoreboard. Okay, well, while they go ahead and talk things over, we will go ahead and take a short break. You're watching TBL Basketball here on the Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School. Back in here at the United Sports TV, Center in Columbus, Ohio, as media for our TBL matchup against the Columbus Condors and the Kokomo Bobcats. And Brett McKnight starts off this quarter with a missed three-point attempt. Seth Donahoe alongside Will Ward. And Will, we should be in for a very interesting fourth quarter as the Condors only have a six-point lead on the Kokomo Bobcats. I stated at halftime, and I'm going to say it again right now. It's going to come down to whoever has the ball last. And it's going to come down to who limits their mistakes. And as we can see right now, Kokomo only being down four. And that you see their bench in every single coach that they have. They're ready, and they're bringing it right now. So Columbus is going to have to do more than what they're doing right now if they want to come out of here with a victory today. In the first half, Columbus 
looked to be, you know, very mobile, constantly moving, not being stagnant. And we've seen in the third quarter that they, they kind of slowed down. They kind of went away from what was working. And Brett McKnight led the Condors in that third quarter with three po or with 11 points as he missed that layup. But it seems like that the, the Condors kind of got a little complacent. They started getting comfortable with that lead. You're up 14 coming out of halftime, and you're believing that you're going to continue to do the same thing that got you that lead. Now, if you remember how the, the halftime, we went into halftime, it was a big three by Hawthorne, and that gave them a little bit more energy to feel like we're still in this game. We're not out of this game. We're 11-2 for a reason, and right now we're down by two, and we're controlling this game. Osborne ends up taking a three. That one's off the mark. Cody Ballard there, though, with the hustle. Couldn't get it off as Nega is in the corner for three. That one's up. That one's no good. And a late whistle is going to be called on Richie Gordon, who's not very happy with that call. The whistle, the whistle, the whistle was taken a while to be blown after the Condors have already secured it. Well, let's see right here. If you look to see if anything. Let's see. Kenner goes up. Oh, that's, uh, sorry, that's the wrong replay here. This one is where we're at now. Well, big three right there. AJ Patty's able to knock down that three. And that's right there is the first lead of the game by the Bobcats. Seven points for the Bobcats here in this quarter alone, and the Condors don't have anything to show. How can they stop the bleeding right now? Another foul. Here comes a timeout real soon from the coach. Forget a timeout. The referee called timeout, and I don't think that's a timeout. That's a T for Richie Gordon. Richie Gordon very upset about something. It's time for Richie Gordon to have a timeout. If this was hockey right now, he'd be going to the penalty box. trying to see what exactly happened. I'm not sure if he was frustrated that there should have been a foul called on him or... Looks like he's saying that the refs were looking at him and that is a second technical on Richie and he is ejected from the game. And Richie Gordon walking back to the locker room is letting him still continue to hear it. Well, early exit, early game. He believes in his team as he's exiting the court. He's letting them know we're still going to get the win. Well, I said it in the beginning, this was going to be an entertaining game, and I don't think we're getting anything short of being entertained right here. We got technicals, we got high-flying dunks, and, you know, once the team start coming back, and you have to figure out what you have to do to stop the bleeding. Kokomo has been firing on all cylinders right now. Every single thing that they're doing is working. As you can see by the inbounds play right here, they know what they're doing. Step back three, he thought about it, and he knocked it down confidently. Cody Ballard having a word with the official about what's exactly going on here as A.J. Patty's going to go to the line for the technical free throws. He gets first one to fall. You can see Brett McKnight saying hello to all the fans and thank you for coming out. The Kokomo fans are definitely saying, hey, we're happy to be here in Columbus. And Brett McKnight saying, well, welcome. <laughs> Those two technical free throws now giving the Bobcats an 81 to 78 lead. Still 937 left to go in the fourth, so far from over, but as we had said at the start of this quarter, it should be a very interesting fourth and final quarter. As the Bobcats retain possession, Bridgeforth takes it to the basket. Can't get anything to fall. Great active hands there by Boo Osborne as he's able to block it from behind. Brett McKnight the other way dishes it off to Todd Brown. Todd Brown with a nice reverse layup against A.J. Patty, and Todd Brown gives them their first points of this quarter. They needed that there. It's been slow production by the offense of Columbus. And here we go. We're right back in here. That's what Big Knight is saying. Don't worry about this. We got this. 
But you have to put up and shut up. You can't just keep talking to the crowd. We need to see more production on the offensive side of Columbus right now. You just lost a big key right now and Richie Gordon going to take an early shower. So we're going to look for somebody to step up in his absence. We said it before that McKnight and Gordon for two of the pretty much the same players. So McKnight might want to save some of that energy where he's talking to the fans because they're going to need him down here in the finish of the fourth quarter. Andy Bosley trying to find a lane. And that foul is going to go against Zachary Douglas as he was trying to block the shot but ended up getting him from behind. That'll send Bosley to the free throw line. McKnight continues to try to get in the head of the team, but you see that the, the Bobcats, they seem unscathed. They, they seem like they're not bothered anymore. You know, they, they seem like they're the more mature, if we can use that word, of the, the teams, or at least players right now. Bosley can't get the first one to fall. Second one is up. Both of them rattle in and out. And it remains 81 to 80. The Bobcats have the lead over the Condors. Nagel with the ball finds a cutting Gibson, and Gibson continues to pick up where he left off in the third quarter. Giving them an 83 to 80 lead. 8.30 left here in the fourth. Cody Ballard has the ball. Passes over to McKnight. And Cody Ballard going back down. And, uh, you know, earlier we had said that we might want to give that we might want to give an award to Cody Ballard for uh, for acting. I think I think Nega deserves an award after that one. He he must have went to the Cody Ballard school of acting as he used his own move against him right there. And you see, Ballard was like he used it he used it and he used it effectively there. So hey, we're turning the ball over. We're going the other way. We see if Kogamo can continue to add to this lead or if somehow Columbus can. I think we have a referee may say he has some blood on him or something like that. I remember uh, Ballard hitting his arm over there on a chair when he tried to save the ball. No blood, no harm, no foul. Back into action we go with 8.20 remaining in the game. Bobcats still with that three-point lead. Hawthorne. Gives it over to Nega, who then gives it off to Patty. Patty trying to find the lane. Nothing there. Gives it off to Gibson. Gibson with the hot hand right now. Tries to get it to Patty, but good defense there by the Condors. Bosley coming the other way. Passes it off to Todd Brown. Todd Brown and is able to get that basket to fall to give them to cut the lead to only one now. 83-82. Bobcats with the ball. Hawthorne passed over to Nega. Nega to Gibson. Gibson to Douglas. Seeing some good fluid movement here by the Bobcats in this second half. And we're going to get an offensive foul on A.J. Patty. As Cody Ballard was able to draw that foul on Patty, giving Patty four fouls now. And... Nice, uh, good transition offense there by the Condors as Todd Brown was able to capitalize on that one. They're going to need some points here to continue to try to slow down the pace that the Condor, or excuse me, the, the Bobcats have come out of the, this fourth quarter with. Being down 14 at the half, Kokomo is really dug deep has really found that offensive fluidity that they were missing in the first half. And they now have a one point lead over the Condors, so 83-82, Brett McKnight trying to find something, loses the handle on the ball. He knew that he had a wide open shot, but he just missed it. Todd Brown now trying to find something. Passes off to Ballard, four seconds remaining on the shot clock. Ballard take a step back three, that one's too strong. Douglas there with the defensive rebound and the Bobcats come the other way. Bosley guarding Hawthorne. Hawthorne kicks it over to Gibson. Gibson for three, and Gibson is on fire. Somebody better get the fire extinguisher if you're here in Columbus because they need to put out this fire that the Bobcats have started off with. They're on fire. Handel, Mantown type opportunities right now. See it here. Hawthorne with the offensive transition, setting it up. 
acted like he was going to drive, drew, Boz, drew, drew Boo Osborne into the middle of the lane, and that was able to leave Gibson wide open. And as we had said, with a timeout being taken here by the Condors with 6.46 remaining, the Bobcats, the intensity, the momentum has all seemed to shift their way. But the Columbus Condors not going away. They're still continuing to grind. What do we need to see here in the final 646 by the Condors and by Kokomo in order to pull this thing out? Well, one thing we're not going to see from the Condors is Richie Gordon coming back into the game. And that's really where it's coming down to. They don't have that presence down there in the paint that anymore. If you look at the difference between the two benches right now, you're seeing McKnight trying to get his, his, his teammates to get into the game. Say, we're not down. We're not out of this game. But Kokomo, they're still sitting. They're still relaxed. So even though McKnight, he's in here by himself right now because you're not going to get Richie Gordon to get um, a Willis Reed to come from out of the locker room right now. He's already showered. He has his shoes on. He's going home. So whatever Columbus has to do to get this lead back into their possession, they're going to have to do it without the Richie Gordon. Out of this timeout, the Condors start with the ball. Brett McKnight wasn't going to mess up the handles on that one, and Tremont Moore fouls him hard and is going to make Richie, or I'm sorry, is going to make Brett McKnight go to the line and earn those two points. McKnight has to step up, and he has to do it right now. He can't miss either one of these free throws. Columbus needs each and every basket to count right now. End of these basketball games comes down to who can make free throws and who cannot turn the ball over. Sounds like second chance opportunities pretty much summed up in a couple words. Have you used that word today? Um, maybe once, <laughs> maybe twice. <laughs> Brett McKnight able to knock down the first one, cutting the Bobcat lead to three. Still has one more to go here. The second one is up and just off the front. Hawthorne there with the rebound. Quickly comes the other way. Boo Osborne guarding him. Swings it over to Nega. Gives it over to Gibson. Then to Moore. Then to Hawthorne. Then to Nega for the deep three. That one just too strong. Bosley pulls down that rebound. Bosley coming the other way. He'll take the thought about taking the three. Boo Osborne will instead no take the three. And that one is just short. Uh, Tremont Moore with the defensive rebound there for the Bobcats. Gibson passes off to Hawthorne, then to Patty, then to Nega. Nega trying to find a lane, but good strong defense there by Boo Osborne, not giving anything up. Cody Ballard, nice handles coming the other way. Goes up for the shot, and Tremont Moore. Yes, Tremont Moore. Is going to pick up that foul and send Cody Ballard to the line. Once again, both of these free throws are huge for Columbus. You have 544 still left here on the clock, so it's not panic time if you're Columbus, but you can't continue to get down court with uh, you know, the Bobcats. They're, they're hot right now, and they're feeding off of the emotion of the crowd. They're feeding off of the emotion of each one, you know, to each other. And Columbus has to do something to stop what's going on. So two-point lead here in the fourth quarter, 544. Let's see if Columbus can make a stop here. Ballard able to convert on one out of the two. 86-84 lead for the Bobcats. 530 remaining in the game. Hawthorne with the ball. Offense trying to be set up here by the Bobcats. Patty couldn't quite get a handle on it. Then he does. Bosley guarding him tightly. Patty with the turnaround. And, man, if no one is going to put a body on Gibson, then he will say, I will easily and happily take these two points. Cody Ballard comes the other way, passes it out to Bosley in the corner, then to McKnight. McKnight trying to find something against the smaller Nega guarding him. Ballard back to McKnight. And McKnight using his size and speed to get around Nega. Once again, Booker T emerges up out of McKnight. That spin move is seemed to be quite effective for McKnight. Hawthorne passes over to Patty, being tightly contested by Ballard. Gibson ends up getting the ball in his hands. 
Terrence Moore, or Tremont Moore wasn't able to get that one to fall as he thought he had just an easy basket as a couple Condors honestly kind of watched Gibson and Moore just try to put up a shot. I'm not for sure if Columbus is enjoying G Gibson as much as we are, but I don't think that's what they need to be doing right now. Cody Ballard with a great take. Couldn't get it to fall, but... Great tip like, in by Osborne. Like Gibson, Boo Osborne says, if no one's going to box me out, I'll, I'll happily and easily take these two points. They go over to Hawthorne. Hawthorne trying to shake Osborne. Gives it to Moore, then to Nega. Nega thought about a three. Todd Brown guarding him, and yeah, Todd Brown did have his hands on him. Possibly one of the weaker fouls we've seen the day today, but nonetheless, Todd Brown is going to pick up his first foul. He's got a tie game here. Tie game. 88-88, 403 left, and the intensity is definitely picking up. So each team just has to make sure that they're doing Good not defense. that right there, turning the ball over. Cody Ballard ends up getting the ball from Boo Osborne. Couple uh, offensive missed opportunities. Cody Ballard thought he got it hit in the head, but Andy Bosley was there to clean up the Ballard and Osborne misses. And the Condors retake the lead here. 90-88, 3.30 left to go. Hawthorne with the ball. He'll end up pulling up for three. That one is nothing but net. Splash waterfalls. Hawthorne, big three right there to give the Bobcats the lead again. Todd Brown trying to find something. Nega guarding him tightly, but Todd Brown puts up his arms and says, I'm too strong for you, Nega, as he's able to go and go to the line to try to convert the three-point play. You see, tight, right, tight walk the baseline right there and had a phenomenal finish. Got a timeout here by the Condors with 3.13 left here in the fourth quarter. And uh, the Condors, after, after that Todd Brown like you said, walking the tightrope on that baseline. You know, we see Todd Brown. It looked like that was going to try to be their first option was Todd or was Brett McKnight. But instead, Brett McKnight was talking to him and say, hey, I've got, I've got Patty sealed off. Take your guy to the hole. Todd Brown with the uh, possible size and strength advantage on Nega. Good defense by Nega, but better offense by Todd Brown. Indeed. Somebody has to step up and take over this game, and I believe that the Condors know that. So it seems to be a collective effort by the Condors. It's not going to just be one person. It has to be a team effort. So both teams are fighting, both teams are clawing, and nobody wants to walk out of here a loser, but unfortunately somebody has to lose. And uh, with that, Todd Brown made layup. That gives the Condors the lead right back, 92 to 91. With 3.13 remaining here in the game. And the number one ranked team in the Midwest, Kokomo Bobcats, sitting at 11 and 2. They've won three in a row. They've won their last four out of five. The Condors also winning their last three in a row and winning three out of their last five games. So both teams looking to extend their win streak here to four in a row. And uh, the Columbus Condors sitting at fourth right now in the Midwest standings. But they've, uh, after a rocky start to the season, the past few games, the past few weeks, they've started to turn around and things are starting to click. Todd Brown's able to get the friendly roll and convert on that three-point play, giving them a two-point lead now. Very exciting remaining three minutes that we have. Hawthorne thought about the three. Dishes it off to Patty. Patty then over to Bridgeforth. Bosley almost got his hands on it. Hawthorne will end up taking that three, and Hawthorne is feeling very confident right now. Taking that one straight to the bank. I think uh, Bosley overplayed that one, and that cost him dearly right there as Hawthorne knocked down the big three. Todd Brown has the ball, guarded by Gibson, then dishes off to McKnight going against Patty. This is the matchup we've seen all day. Just short on that spin move floater. 
And Patty was able to get that rebound. So here comes Bridge fourth for the Bobcats, who have a 94-93 lead. The defense, of, the defense of the intensity by Bosley really picking up. Cody Ballard will go all the way. Couldn't get the layup to fall. And Derek Hawthorne picks up his fifth foul. And because of that foul, that will send Ballard to the line for two to for the Condors to potentially regain the lead. Condors down one, 94-93 with 2.16 remaining. His first one is up and good. See good. a great hands there by Bosley. You see, once it got in the hands of Ballard, he knew what to do with it. And he was, took it straight to Hawthorne, and I believe that's what they're going to have to continue to do. If you have five fouls, you're going to have to continue to take it to Hawthorne to try to get him out of the game, quite honestly. A.J. Patty Hill ended up taking a three. That one's just off the mark. Osborne is able to secure that defensive rebound as the Condors have a one-point lead with two minutes left to go here in this game. 95-94. McKnight comes to set a screen, but Osborne dishes off to Ballard. Now McKnight will do a slip screen. Nothing was open for Ballard. Todd Brown trying to find a lane, ends up spinning, takes it into the basket. Hawthorne was out of position but was able to recover. He gets the steal. He'll end up pulling up from mid-range, gets that one to fall. And Derek Hawthorne making his last three shots in a row. Cody Ballard coming the other way, getting trapped in the corner by Bridgeforth and Hawthorne. Todd Brown then dishes off to Andy Bosley, takes the contact and finishes through that Marcel Kinner contact giving them a 97-96 lead right now with a minute 20 left. And Will, I think you may be right. This may come down to who has the ball last. Final possession, and luckily, you know, you didn't get a circuit shot there and no knockdown, but we're gonna see him go to the line here, and he's gonna have to, quite frankly, he's gonna have to earn those shots. He's gonna have to earn those, those two points, and his team needs him right now. Hawthorne, he's played a phenomenal game. He's led this team while he, he while Gibson was out, and he's kept his composure when the team was down. So let's see if he knocks the free throws down to give him either a two-point lead or at least tie the game up. Cody Ballard wasn't happy with that call. Playing some physical defense and thought he got all ball as Hawthorne makes his first one. Tying this game up at 97, a minute 10 remaining here in the fourth. Second one is up, and that one falls down with the friendly roll. Now the Bobcats are in the lead again. Back and forth we go, 98-97 for the Bobcats. Todd Brown being tightly contested by Gibson. Throws it out to Bosley, then back to Brown. McKnight coming to set a screen. Todd Brown. Mitch matching the paint with McKnight. Todd Brown not able to get that one to fall. 43 seconds left. And we got some guys slipping and sliding all around down here. Hawthorne put on the brakes and made Bosley run into the back of him. And that one will send Derek Hawthorne to the line with 42.4 seconds remaining. Coach yeah, Bosley the there just was uh, a little bit too aggressive on uh, trying to catch back up. And like you said, uh, Hawthorne just playing on the brakes, rear end collision. And that's why he's at the line right now. That's always, uh, I always feel like that's such a tough call to make. I mean, the guy dribbling the ball has a defender on, coming at him from behind. And then the ball handler intentionally just stops going his full speed, so he makes the defender run into him. And uh, I don't know, it's just, a, it's just a tough one to call, but nonetheless is the right call. As we see right here, Hawthorne just putting on those brakes. Gibson trying to come in, does the splits, and Gibson and Hawthorne have a good little laugh about it. Right now, I believe that Columbus is, is running on fumes. Whatever they're doing to try to keep inside of this game, as they just went down by three, they're running on fumes. And you see that the bench 
it's the difference of the game right now. You see more players that's on the sideline for the condor, or excuse me, for, there's more players on the bench for the Bobcats than there is for the Condors. So the, the absence of Richie Gordon really comes into effect right now as you're coming down to the final little minutes of the game where you need somebody to be able to step up. You need somebody to be able to be that breath. Derek Hawthorne having 12 points in this quarter alone for the Bobcats, making those last two free throws. Gives the Bobcats a 197 lead as the Condors call a timeout with 42.4 seconds remaining. What are you, if you're the coach for the Condors, what are you setting up here? If there's 42 seconds remaining, you still got a potential two for one opportunity. If for, they are able to tie this game up with a three, let's say they make a two, it's a, it's a one possession game, a one point game. There's so many different options. What are you What are you trying to do here if you're the Condors, Will? With 42 seconds left, I'm not forcing a three. I want a high percentage shot. So if the three is there, you take the three. But if not, you're not forcing this here. So you want to get with the ball in and keep the ball into the high hands of maybe, you know, right now we have it in the hands of Ballard. So if you have the open shot, then you take it. If not, then we need to get points. As long as we don't come out of here with, you know, no points, and you got a turnover, so that's pretty much not what you wanted here if you were the Condors, and that might have been the plug that you, you know, that might have been all she wrote right there. You're still not out of it. You're just sending Hawthorne to the line, who's been knocking pretty much every single shot that he had, but if you if it was ever a time to hit the panic button, now is the time. Todd Brown picking up that foul, his second sending Hawthorne to the line. Bobcats with a three-point lead, and Hawthorne has made his last four free throws. First one is up and good. Second one up, and that one rolls in and out. 20 seconds left, Todd Brown pushing it quickly the other way for the Condors. Todd Brown kicks it out to Boo Osborne. Osborne will take that three. That one's just short. Todd Brown with the offensive rebound out to Cody Ballard. Cody Ballard with that three. That one's off the mark. And Andy Bosley tried to, tried to kick it out. And it was last touch by Bosley with 4.8 seconds left. Kokomo Bobcats have a 101-97 lead. And it looks like they may potentially walk out of here with this one as the ball is inbounded. The timer winds down. And that will be it, the Kokomo Bobcats improving to 12 and two on the season. Still holding that number one spot in the Midwest. And uh, Will Ward, a really heartbreaking loss here if you are the Columbus Condors being up 14 at halftime and losing this game by four. Indeed, it is a heartbreaking you know, loss for the Condors right now because you have that lead and you have the chance to pretty much knock off Goliath because you're playing David, you're the four, at number four and Kokomo came in here 11 and two and we understand why they're 11 and two because if you play phenomenal like that being down, you didn't let adversity come and get into your head and you didn't let the, the you know, Brett McKnight, him getting in your head, that's why you're continually winning, and this is why you're going home with smiles on your face if you're from Kokomo. And uh, after Martrelli and Gibson for Kokomo exited the game briefly in that early in the first quarter, he ends up with 11 points in the third and seven in the fourth, giving him 18. And uh, when he came back onto the floor, in this second half for Kokomo. He really helped turn this game around. He was the ignition that Kokomo was missing in the first half that possibly had got that lead up to 14 if you're the Bob, or excuse me, if you're the Condors. If you had a player that could have came in and gave the Condors the spark that Gibson gave to the Bobcats, then we may be having a different conversation right now. But the Condors just didn't have enough firepower to stop the Kokomo Bobcats today. So if you are the Columbus Condors, you know, you got some time off until your next game. Both these teams uh, have some time off until their next game. Columbus Condors now 6-6 six and six on the season after that loss. Uh, 
What are some things that you want to be focusing on heading into your next week of games? I want to continue, as you just said, focus. I want our players to focus more on being focused. Sometimes you can out-chatter yourself out of the game. You talk so much during a game where your production did not match your talk. So if you continue to make mistakes and you continue to do the things that other teams can capitalize on, that's why you have those losses. When you get teed up and you get thrown out of the game, that's going to affect your team in a negative way. And the scoreboard illustrates that right now. Well, for the Columbus Condors, looks like Todd Brown has led the way with 26 points. Brett McKnight with 22. Richie Gordon with 18. And uh, Cody Ballard with 17. Uh, and for the Kokomo Bobcats, 25 points goes to Derek Hawthorne. Martellian Gibson with 18. A.J. Patty and Amias Nago with 14 apiece. So just go ahead and recap. What did you see out of today's game, Will? I seen that you cannot take stats into consideration because when you have stats that say that Gibson should only have 4.2 points and nine assists per game, Gibson and Hawthorne was the dynamic duo that the Bobcats needed to take this team from down 14 at halftime to getting a victory that's, that was on the road in a hostile environment that was not your, you know, your regular place that you play. You got what you needed to get the job done. That's what I would have for today. Well, after today's game, as I'd said, Kokomo Bobcats improved to 12 and 2. They are still number one in the Midwest, and the Columbus Condors fall to six and six. After the Bobcats' victory of 101 to 97 here in Columbus for Will Ward, I am Seth Donahoe. We will go ahead and wrap things up. And until next time, everyone be safe. This is TBO Basketball here on the Score on Air Network.